Square Minute is rated R. The Rock Hero Picture Show is also rated R. We're going to spend this time discussing the movie in gory detail, and along the road we will talk about some adult content and use some of our favorite swear words. Ibasi tikvenik kupisi shvishti. Consider yourselves warned. Welcome to Rocky Horror Minute, the podcast where we take the Rocky Horror Picture Show and dissect it to see how it ticks, one minute at a time. I'm one of your hosts, Leandra. And I'm your other host, Kelly. And dearest, darling Kelly, please explain to me what happens in this minute so we can go over it all again, but slower. Okay. So it begins with Janet saying, where did that motorcyclist come from? It started on motorcyclist. Brad does not really respond to this. He says, well, I guess we'll just have to turn back. And he starts to back the car up. An explosion of some sort happens. Janet says, what was the bang? And he says, we must have a blowout. Damn it, I knew I should have gotten that spare tire fixed. And then he says, well, you just stay right here and I'll go for help. And Janet says, where will you go? We're in the middle of nowhere. And he thinks. And then he says, didn't we pass a castle back down the road a few miles? They may have a phone. And Janet, after thinking about it, says, I'm coming with you. And he's like, oh, no, darling, there's no sense in both of us getting wet. And she responds, I'm coming with you. Besides, darling, the owner of that phone might be a beautiful woman and you might never come back again. Brad chortles. They get out of the car. Janet puts a newspaper over her head because that will surely protect her hair from the pouring rain. And... Brad kicks the tire, which is super flat, one time that somehow doesn't fix it, and then they go off into the night. We begin to hear the first notes of our next song, but we'll get into that next minute. That was my fine-toothed comb, Leandra. What do you think about this minute? I honestly love a fair amount of this. Not all of it, though. Not lots of it, though. I enjoy, just from a from a nitpicky perspective... I enjoy that for a brief moment moment in time, you get a really detailed view of the dashboard interior of the car. It's a cyan dash with chrome accents, and the key is swaying as the car goes backwards. And I can only assume that since Brad is clearly not driving, that they have some poor person just behind the car, pushing it, playing it, uh, making it go up and down. That's often what I've seen done when you see kind of the the wide shot of that. I have a question for you, though, Kelly. Okay. When Brad hears this explosion, the first thing he does is he puts his arm out and seemingly fondles Janet. Okay. Obviously, he's not trying to grab her booby in that specific moment, or maybe he is. What he's trying to do is make sure that she doesn't go head first into the windshield. Are you of an age where that was something that your parents did to you? Were you ever just fucking clotheslined by one of your parents because they stopped abruptly? Leandra, not only have, has, honestly, you know what? I'm going to take it back. I don't think my parents have ever done that to me, but I do it every time I stop abruptly when I'm driving to my passenger my dog, my pile of junk that I have sitting in the passenger seat. I just you remembered what, what else you do when uh, when something surprising happens in the car. What? You start screaming. Oh. <laughs> Kelly once tried uh, Kelly once attempted to pick me up from my apartment and she got out of the car waved at me. <laughs> I hadn't put the parking brake on and the car just starts slowly rolling away from her into other cars and her response was just ah, ah, ah. Uh, unfortunately I have to correct you there Leandra the problem wasn't that I had not put the parking brake on I had not parked the car or put the brake on so when I stop my car like if I'm waiting at a stoplight or even if I'm just like 
waiting out front of a store for someone or at out front of their apartment for them to come out. I don't usually put the car in park. I don't know why I'm not in that habit. I probably should be for this reason. But I usually just sit with my foot on the brake and, and I forgot that. So I literally just got out of my car without it being in park and without anyone having the brake on. And it started to, it started to roll away towards other parked cars. I am literally not an idiot, but mm. from the way I act and anyone who's made it this far in the podcast will know I'm so ditzy. I don't know. I don't know why I'm like this. I'm really absent-minded. So. That same day, she drove over a curb and also shrieked, which is why I'm pretty sure that this is just a thing that she does. Yeah, I know. Whenever I'm startled in any way, I, like, shriek like a cartoon character. And honestly, I don't drive. Who am I to judge? I would probably just it scream constantly. Has never stopped you from judging oh. in the context of driving or anything else. Yeah. Anyway, so even though this makes me sound like not the best driver, I have to say I'm a pretty experienced driver and I have I have had like a true tire blowout, like my tire exploding on the highway when I was going like 75 miles per hour. And it was still not as dramatic and loud (laughs) and big as this. I just love that Jana goes, what was that bang? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like, well, (laughs) I don't know. Like I've, I have the same amount of information as you do at this point. But I do that. I yeah, go, nah, yeah. what is this thing that just happened? <laughs> yeah. And the people around me go, let's find out together, dumbass. Yeah. Like in a movie. You're like, who is that? What's he going to do? Yeah. It's really a shame that both of the hosts of this are fucking stupid. Yeah. But did people really come here for intellectual critique? I mean, ostensibly, Yes. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You guys can uh, can contact me for a full refund of your money. Oh, let's let's not be too hasty. <laughs> okay. So then Brad finishes that quick fondle of the booby, and he the when he's talking with Janet, he slams his fist on the back of the blue leather bench seat, and the look on Janet's face, I I think can only be described as petulant. Yeah. Janet is incredibly angry that brad dares to not be able to prevent a blowout i love that about janet in this minute i specifically love her delivery of the line where will you go we're in the middle of nowhere like she is so sick of him and his shit and like actively emasculating him (laughs) in this moment although in a second she like turns on a dime because then she starts being like sexy and cutesy you know like besides darling the owner of that phone might be a beautiful woman and you might never come back again please don't use your sexy little baby voice (laughs) on this podcast i'm trying to retain those listeners real (laughs) i'm using my god-given sex appeal Anyway, but yeah, so I lo- I do love that, though. I think her acting in this minute is really, really fun. The dialogue in this feels like Brad and Janet are about to go someplace to get fucking murdered, which is not the case, at least for now. And while you're looking at it, or I guess this is the first time I've noticed this, I see that the steering wheel is teal inside of this vehicle, Everything about this is just very aesthetically pleasing. I very much miss the big land shark vehicles in very, very bright colors. You don't really get that anymore. Yeah, I agree. Another thing just to throw out there is just take a look at Janet's hair. It's so nice. It's not frizzy. It's perfectly curled. She looks exactly like someone who's just graduated recently. Sure. And the barrettes in her hair are totally normal for an adult to wear. (laughs) I mean, I had similar ones, too, when I was five. And I wore them to Sunday school. So, I mean, this is pretty much the same thing, right? 
Yeah, the Shirley Temple curls are weird, but I don't know if that would have been like a popular hairstyle of the day. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It I love it. I think it's gorgeous. Yeah, it is cute. So what do you think Janet's plan is for coming with Brad? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Because I got to say, in the same situation, my boyfriend, who's also named Brad, actually, uh, would say, oh, no, darling, there's no sense in both of us getting wet. And I'd be like, okay, great. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The movie would would be over if I was Janet. I'd be like, wow, damn, that's crazy. Good thing I have a newspaper. Can you leave the... (laughs) Can you leave the keys here? (laughs) I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, Brad would be getting railed in the castle, I guess. But but I would just be playing uh, Candy Crush on my phone or whatever. (laughs) Uh, But you know what would be terrifying? If you didn't have cell signal. Oh, my God. What if phones, but too much? That, you know, maybe that is why uh, why she needed to go into the castle. She needs to charge. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's the thing, though, about women these days. All they know is charge their phone, <laughs> twerk, eat hot chip, be bisexual, and lie. I did that in the wrong order, but... I mean, did you? <laughs> Jesus. So, I don't think that it is practical to think that it is actually raining during this shot. I think that that is cinema magic. Yeah. And not excellent cinema magic at that. It's overkill, right? Because there's even parts where they're trying to shoot through the, through the windshield into Brad and Janet, and you can barely see them because the water's just coming down in sheets. Yeah. I mean, are you talking about when they're still in the car or when they get out of the car? Starting with when they're still in the car. When they're in the car, it's astonishingly bad rain effect. It looks like they're in a car wash, like going through that rain sheet part of the car wash. And if I can find a clip, this should be Oscar singing working at the car wash. We don't actually have that. (laughs) We we could. (laughs) I'm sure that we could do that. So anyway... Yeah, I yeah the the rain effect is questionable, but again, the budget on this movie, we're not. It's one of those pieces of the Rocky Horror Picture Show that makes me go, oh, okay, you did your best. Yeah, and then Brad gets out. He goes to kick the wheel. He ends up kicking a stick as well, but it's a small stick. I don't think that that's what caused the the blowout or anything. It's a twig, and. You can see that the hubcaps say Ford. And it's at this moment in the minute where we get the first ever recorded callback for Rocky Horror. It was five months after the initial release. It was Louis Ferres Jr. And he yelled, buy an umbrella, you cheap bitch, when Janet puts the newspaper on her head. If you hate callbacks and you have a time machine, and you try and prevent one thing, it would be this one thing. Well, that was all I wanted to go over before we head on into callbacks. So was there anything else that you still had on your list? Uh, No, not besides callbacks. All right. Well, let's start with yours, and then I'll jump in with some, some slightly kookier ones. Okay, well, there is the super obvious when he says, Damn it, you say... Janet. That is clear. So then he says, didn't we pass a castle back down the road a few miles? And Janet like turns and looks off to the side and she opens her mouth for a second. And it it is quite hilarious when somebody screeches during that moment. It's hard to get the timing right. And I work really hard as a giant, as a Janet. (laughs) <laughs> you work really hard as what uh i work really hard as a giant janet to to open my mouth at the exact right moment so that when audience members are screaming and it lines up 
it's hard because there's like not many audio cues for me to know exactly when she's opening her mouth, but I try. And uh, I also just want to say one of the funnier lines in the movie for me is Brad's casual delivery of, didn't we pass a castle back down the road a few miles? Like, he really sells it as though that's a normal thing to have like, huh, a castle, anyway. But anyway, so I love that. And the scream is one of my favorite callbacks throughout the movie. Uh, Then when he says, don't worry, there's no sense, or no, there's no sense in both of us getting wet, the classic callback is, oh, she won't. And then when it says, when she says, the owner of that phone might be a beautiful woman and you might never come back again, you can either, in response to beautiful woman, people will either say, oh, he is, or, well, you're half right. And then when you might never come back again, the callback is, you should be so lucky. Because, you know, that would be great if Brad just disappeared forever. And then, of course, when the tire comes into view, we have the self-inflating tire kick twice to activate, and then he kicks it only once, doesn't inflate, and he has to go to the castle. So those are the big ones I have. I have just one or two more. Right at the beginning of this, when Brad says, well, I guess we'll just have to turn back. I like the callback of don't turn back. There's a fork in the road or watch out for the cameraman. So I think that those are pretty fun. I like throwing in there because I like some wholesome callbacks. Thank goodness Brad and Janet were wearing their seatbelts. Right. That's a good one. Instead of the Twilight Zone uh, for, oh, but where did that motorcyclist come from? A lot of people particularly earlier on, this has kind of been phased out, would say Japan or Kawasaki. Literally, where did the motorcycle come from? You know, it's clever. For didn't we pass a castle back down the road a few miles? It's castles don't have phones, assholes. And then I like the iterations of that where you go, phones don't have assholes, castle. Assholes (laughs) don't have castles, phone. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe I forgot that one. That is one of the big classics. There's of course for that pregnant pause where Brad is just tapping on the on the steering wheel before that before he says, Didn't we pass a castle? There's what's white and sells cheeseburgers and gives you the shits. Because <laughs> it's a yeah. white castle. It's funny. Yeah. I insist it's funny. When Janet says Oh no, darling, there's no sense in both of us getting wet. Another fun callback that you can throw in there is Janet's already wet. Check the gear shift. Very good. And then I'm coming with you. Hmm. You can say, that'll be a first. (laughs) Yeah. Another one of the callbacks to the callbacks. And you might never come back again. And the callback is you should be so fucking lucky. Fucking lucky. The callback to the callback is you should be so lucky fucking. Oh, uh, yeah. Right as Janet's getting out of the car and she puts the newspaper on, that's where the buy an umbrella, you cheap bitch, makes its way in. Okay. You already touched on the self inflating tire that you just need to kick twice to activate. So I think that that is, that's at least all I have. I'm sure that there are more. If there are more that we've missed, please let us know. You can let us know through email. You can let us know through leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Yeah. If you want to leave us a one-star review, just email that to us. Yeah, I'll post it for you. Yeah. All right. So, if you're ready, I think we can sign off here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and end this the same way that we do every time. Now. now. You don't you have, have to, go to go home, home but, but you, you can't, can't stay, stay here, here. So, so get, get the, the fuck, fuck out. out. Working at the car wash. Whoa, 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 whoa. Working at the car wash, yeah. Also, yeah, I do love you, Dan. Dan, I love you.
Dan, I'm in love with you. This is how I wanted you to find out. Uh, don't edit any of that out.